Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another Capture One video. I'm going to be making these on Wednesdays and try and create a Capture One Wednesday, if you will. And that means that the Photoshop will move, of course, to Friday, because we all love alliteration. Uh, I will also be doing some photography videos intermittently on Mondays. I have a photo studio just outside of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm oftentimes creating things in that studio. A little bit of DIY and some creativity to try and create sets uh, where I can shoot clients and concepts, and some of that might be interesting. Uh, so today we're going to focus on color grading. Uh, so we're going to start with some of the gotchas for color grading and ultimately how to create our own styles and presets. Uh, because I find that I want a specific group of images to use a style, like for example, my boudoir work. I like it to have a certain feel to it, although each set has its own nuances. In general, I want a nice consistent base to start from. Now, if you're a person who's thinking about selling your own presets, and creating LUTs or making them and selling them online. Uh, this is also a great primer for you because there's some pieces of this that you might otherwise miss and screw up like I did. Uh, so I'll show you some of the things that got me originally and you need to avoid those now. I learned the pain so you don't have to. Uh, so let's get started. I'm gonna approach this from the standpoint of working with selling your presets because Creating that mentality will help you create a nice neutral preset you can use everywhere. So when we're talking about presets and styles, realize that a preset is based on almost every tool inside of Capture One. Uh, for example, in here in presets, you'll notice that it comes with a bunch already. Uh, now those are all handy and great, but maybe you have your own way you want to apply them. For example, I have one in my Clarity that I use specifically for eyes. So it's just called eyes. Uh, so I will always apply this to the eyes and images because it adds a little bit of structure, a little bit of clarity, and a little bit of pop. Not over the top because we've seen that before and I don't want that. I want to make sure that I add a little bit of something and that's what that preset is for. A style is more of a collection of presets. So as we apply them all to the same layer, we can then save that layer as a preset and apply them all at once. Now a couple kindness things we don't want to do is like say for example I have this image and you might say well that is a bit overexposed and it is a bit bright um, it's not natural light by the way we put strobes in our windows at the studio and then I have a very large umbrella next to this uh, so it creates the idea that the light is all coming from natural light on that side uh, just from a strategy standpoint, I don't know, some photographers may feel that they want to put a light on the opposite side, but in those cases, you'd have to wonder how the house was constructed. Who would create a room that would have windows that are that tight to their bed, and it just gets a little weird. So if you create a believable space using your lighting, I tend to think that people don't bother to kind of you know, like look at your image sideways and go, I don't, I don't understand what's going on there. Although she's beautiful and she's well lit, I just don't get it. Uh, sticking with this mentality, I like this idea. So by the way, this is my friend Christine. I will put a link to her Instagram down below if you would like to follow her. She's a fabulous model, and if she's in your area, I highly recommend hiring her. Let's talk about the gotcha first of all, and that is the exposure. We don't want to do exposure adjustments to our styles because if you have an image like this one, exposure is a bit extreme and you want to back it down. By making that exposure adjustment, you might take an image that is darker and make it even more dark. So we want to kind of eliminate those things and we don't want to judge the image based on that. So by the way, if you think this is overexposed, keep an eye on your exposure evaluation tool, which tells you exactly how you did in the eyes of Capture One. And yes, the window might be a bit bright, but I don't care about the window, I care about her. And it's all recoverable. You know, I can pull this back a bit and see that indeed I still have detail in the window. Do I want this to be part of my style I create? Probably not. So we have a group of things that we want to kind of do to this image before we start styling it. So uh, what I would tend to do is create another layer above this one, a new filled layer, and call it neutral. So we create a neutral layer. Here's where we want to kind of get rid of our problems that make this image unique. Uh, so for example, white balance. Um, I would white balance on this white wall here. And this is a warm gray comforter. And you see now her skin tone is really kind of taken off and it looks much better. Um, here is where I could apply this like highlight recovery so I don't feel like this image is really overbaked. And we'll say that's, that's good enough. 
Now everything else I do to the image, I want to do it on the background layer. The reason we do it on the background layer is because there are some tools in Capture One that do not allow modification on a layer. Uh, the main one being the black and white conversion only works on the background layer currently. So if you're going to create a style and you want to be a black and white style, you have to do it on the background. Uh, so just as a best practice, you should work in the background. So by the way, this is all stuff that I have learned over time from watching videos and have done kind of my own experimentation. Uh, so if you're like, well, I've heard that before, that's great. Let it pound into your head so that you understand the ramifications of what we're doing and why we're doing it. So uh, let's talk about what I want to do to this image to make it interesting. So my boudoir images, I like a little bit of light and airy. So I don't want a true black point. So I tend to lift my black point up. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do this. In fact, if you do it often, why don't you just create a preset called No True Black? And that's exactly what I did. So this preset now has lifted the part of the RGB curve up so that I now have No True Black anywhere in this image. I just tend to like that look. Uh, you can also do that with Shadow Recovery, but again, I kind of want to stay out of these for a style that I would be creating. So I don't want to be tempted to use them. I would rather use the curve. I mean, you could use them, there's nothing against it, but again, you have no idea what you're gonna face ultimately when someone's going to apply this thing. You wanna make sure that it's gonna work on a majority of images. So I like that. Now let's talk about color grading. So for color grading this, I'm gonna start in the, by the way, you can use the curve for color grading, but I much prefer the color balance tool. And again, we are still working on the background layer here. Uh, I created some presets in the past and you, they all look good until you get to this one. And you're like, what happened there? Well, obviously this is me not having an image that had a white balance that was normal. And I created a, a complement C, which is what I call mine. And I ended up not liking it. And now it's like this ugly duckling thing that's sitting in there uh, versus all the other ones, which are very nice uh, because I didn't learn the lesson of creating that neutralizing layer first. So that's why that's there. Uh, so in the shadows, I just start at moving it wildly until I find something that I like. So I like a little bit cooler shadow in this image. And so if you move this slider here, you affect how much, how strong that is. And if you affect this one here, it affects how bright it is in the shadows. By the way, you do not need to pick a color. If you wanted to affect just the shadows here, kind of like that no true black I was talking about, you can do that by lifting this. It's the same thing. Uh, so I tend to want to do a little bit of blue here. And I don't want to play with this because I did that in the curve already. And by the way, I want you to keep an eye on this curve. Speaking of curves, the histogram, notice that it does not move as I'm applying these changes. So the midtone, by the way, I find the midtone and the shadow look really good opposite each other just as a point of departure, not to say you have to land there because if you decide, well, I want to go down here and make some sort of tealy thing, well, that's that's your business. Like, this isn't too bad. I like her skin tone. And that's really what I'm looking at is her skin tone here. Uh, so that weird-ass green there, that makes the skin tone. Okay. And then the master. This is the weird... Oh, by the way, we don't really use the highlight one. I don't use the highlight one. I tend to think it adds this weird color to the image and it just doesn't work for me. I like my white to be white, not yellow. Um, that's up to you though. And again, you can always adjust this to brightness and not play with it. Uh, but you're blowing out your image on purpose here. That's kind of what this is doing. And then my master. Now watch the curve. When I play with the master, it actually will shift the curve. So you can overexpose an image if it's close to the edge and you start to play with the master be aware that you can impart some exposure to an image because it does push the curve. So a little trick there, just be aware of it. Um, I tend to like this little bit of warmth here. So that, that mid-tone green color, then the master pushed it more toward the skin tone color that I like on her and this, uh, the shadows down here in the, in the quilt and so on. So I like that. That looks really nice to me. So now I'm happy with it. I can go up here to my adjustment um, tool. If this isn't here, by the way, you can right click and choose add tool tab and choose adjustment. Uh, or you can add it to any existing tool you have. Uh, so you'll see a bunch of them that come with Capture One, user presets, built-in presets. Uh, the user presets here, by the way, you see all those compliments I talked about, including this terrible one. Uh, so they're all in here. Uh, if you wanted to get to them this way, you could as well. Uh, but what I wanna do is create a new one. So I have a few here, uh, standard, uh, this other one, couture one. So I'm gonna do here and do 
save user style. And it's going to ask you, of the things you changed, what are the ones you want to include with this? Now, because we were careful and we didn't say add our copyright data, so this isn't checked, and we didn't play with the lens correction or other things that, again, may not work for someone who's using your style later, uh, we want to change the color balance and I want to change the curve. And I probably could have done this entire thing with the color balance tool. In truth, uh, for raising the shadows, I could have done it without using the curve. Uh, but just for sake of demonstration, you can see all the tools you've changed will be highlighted here. We click Save, and it's going to drop it into this here. Now, if, if you drop it in here, it's going to appear right under User Styles, but you can create subfolders in here. So if you wanted to create another folder called Boudoir, if you want to spell it right, and then inside of Boudoir, we create a new style. Uh, let's give it a fun name. We'll call it Christine One and hit save. Okay, so now that I have my preset done, I want to go and apply it to this other image. I can go to that other image and I can go to my presets and I can just choose it from here. And you see it's all ready to go. Now, this one looks a lot cooler than this one because the white balance is wrong. Remember, I did the white balance on that separate layer here, this neutralized layer. So I need to do the same thing here. Just go white balance this image and everything else will be the same. So now we have a very consistent color across everything. Now, if I had a whole set of images, I would not apply it this way. I would do it differently. I would do, I would find the image I like. I would push the copy adjustments to the primary from the primary variant. I would go here and before I apply it, I would go and check my adjustment clipboard down here. This shows you all the things that are about to happen. Um, I may not want to apply, for instance, a crop, for example, uh, may not be appropriate because maybe this image is horizontal. So I would not do the crop, but the layers, the neutralizing, all the other stuff that was part of that style we created are good to go here. So then I would click on this to apply those changes to this variant. And there we go. So uh, two ways to apply that. Um, if, but if you have a whole set, I would use this system and not just applying a style and then having to worry about neutralizing it as well. Because we do want all the images in the set to sing from the ha same hymnal. Uh, so this is how I would do that. So that's how you would create your own styles and uh, presets. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, once again, if you like the video, please take the time to click the like button. It means a lot to me and it helps everyone find these videos. And if you have any questions, again, I'll be trying to post these on Wednesdays from here on out, and we'll see how far this goes. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.